the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll bring your name. I'll bring your name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. You are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. as well. They do a wonderful job at working with our young people. They were out here yesterday practicing and, and uh, the commitment that first of all the parents 
the commitment that you put into getting them here. The anointing is here, but you've got to get them in the anointing. You've got to get them in the presence of God and get them in the presence of men and women who can stir up that gift that's on the inside of your child. Your, your child, I remember Chris first started singing. And to see his growth in the Lord is amazing. And it's because being around men of, men of God like Minister DeMond Devane and Greg and just being around um, the praise team and, and just how he has grown in the Lord is such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing as well as all of our youth who are just singing about Jesus. And I don't know about you, but again, dealing with what young men and young women are dealing with now, when I see a child singing praises unto God, it just tickles my soul. I know it tickles my soul because my daughter's up there. One day my son will be up there and I'm just happy they could be doing anything else. They could be talking about anything else. But they're singing praises unto Jesus. What more else would you want your child to do? Yeah, we know they're going to play football and dance and all of that, but yet they're talking about Jesus. So I'm excited for what God is doing right here at Kingdom Life Fellowship through our youth. They're growing in so many tremendous ways, but be in prayer for them. Because when they walk into that building on tomorrow, they're going to need this same Jesus that they're talking about today. They're going to need him on the playground, on the school bus, in the classrooms. They're going to need the Lord. You're at the house drinking your cup of coffee, just sitting outside enjoying the day when these children are going through so much anguish in their mind, fighting so much, fighting temptation, fighting prayer pressure, fighting so much. Be in prayer for them on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. Oh, my heart goes out to our young men and young women. I would love to sit down and minister. Yes, I would love to sit down and minister to the young boy that took the lives of those in Raleigh. I would love to just sit down and tell them, man, Jesus is the way, baby. And I understand whatever you were dealing with, I get that, but son, even in your position now, at the age of 15, you may not never walk free ground again, but you can still meet Jesus. Oh, y'all, the half of y'all lost that because, and I understand the emotional part of that is that we want justice and sometimes we want their lives taken, but Christ just didn't come to save me. He came to save all. And even though that person made the choice that they make, God can still save them. They don't have to die and go to hell because of the crime that they committed. Yeah, they may not never walk free ground again, but nevertheless, Jesus died for them, so they ought to have an opportunity as well. I'm excited this morning. As you can tell, I'm already down here at your level. So if you have your Bibles, would you please stand with me for the word of the Lord on this morning? There is a word in the house on this morning. I told Alvin and Dre that I'm coming down. I said, I'm coming down this morning, and I'm going to be right at the level of all our children, right at your level. The gospel according to John chapter 6. Once again, we thank God this morning for all of our online listeners. We thank you for tuning in with us and hanging out with us for a few minutes, and we pray that a song has already been sung, something has already been said that has just blessed your soul And right there in your house, you are experiencing a relationship and an encounter with Jesus. And that's ultimately what today should be about. John chapter 6, we're going to read verses 8, 9, and 10. When you have it, say amen. 8, 9, and 10. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, Andrew is speaking to Jesus. Verse 9, he said, there is a lad here. Here, here being at the place that this miracle is getting ready to take place, he said, which have five barreling loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Verse 10, and Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, So the men sat down in number about 5,000. Go back there to verse 9. There is a lad which have five burling loaves 
and two fishes. But what are they among so many? Translation, what he has in his hand, how can it make a difference? My subject this morning, as we are talking about our youth, but also I don't want you to go to sleep on me, and I want you to be thinking and having a youthful minded. I want you to, I want you to think within yourself, and this is not arrogantly, this is not boasting, but I want you to say, I got it. I got it. I got it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I got it. I, I got it. 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 The Bible tells us, I believe, over there in 1 John, in 1 John, I believe, chapter 4, it talks about greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I'm not saying this, as I said a few minutes ago, to make anybody believe that I got it, which means I'm going to flaunt it. I'm not saying that. I want you to think about this story here. We all know this story here is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Now, let me help you. 5,000 men. And if the, man, if the man was married, my situation, Brittany, myself, Nolan, and Eliza would be four people. So although it said 5,000, there was more. It possibly was at least eight to 10,000 people to be fed. It just recognized the man. This is from John's perspective. This is John writing what he saw. This same story is over in Matthew, Luke, and Mark. But John is writing what he physically saw. So it was more than just 5,000 people men and women and children who were hungry. The Bible says at the beginning of, of chapter 6 there, it talks about Jesus. It says a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he had did on them that were diseased. Can I help us this morning? You heard me make this statement before that, that wherever Jesus is at, that's where I want to be. And I hope you really truly mean that within your heart because, again, this is no season for you to be in a place and he's not there. Pastor, how do I know that he's there? There ought to be some fruits there. There ought to be some, 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 some fruits which, which identifies itself with him, such as love. There ought, to be, there ought to be some kind of unity that these are the things of Christ. There ought to be some kind of characteristics of Christ in the place. This is no season, no time, no hour for any of us, children included, for us just to be going through the motions of life. On Sunday mornings when I get up, I need to know where the Lord is at. And I'm grateful this morning that all you pressed your way, believing in your heart by faith that he is here. Now, by some chance, if he wasn't here, I hope and pray you would say, with all due respect, Pastor Henry, but I don't believe the Lord is here. I would pray and hope that while you and myself are on this journey, as we see the coming of the Lord, I want to be where he's at. Look at your neighbor and say, I want to be where Jesus is at. I want to be where Jesus is at. I don't want to be where there's foolishness at. I don't want to be where there's discords at. I don't want to be where there's hatred, animosity. I don't want to be where there's just, I want to be where the Lord is at. Because in his presence is miracles. In his presence is healing. In his presence is the fullness of joy. I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I ain't got time just to be somewhere that, that may possibly have a a, a, a steeple on it, and this is where many churches are failing and many saints of God. And when I say church, I'm talking about the body of Christ. We've got to really discern, is the Lord really there? But these people knew that, that wherever Jesus was, possibly mirrors, miracles were following. So the multitude of people had saw him make the mute speak. They saw him give sight to the blind. They saw him be able to help the deaf hear. They saw him raise, raise Lazarus from the dead. They saw him and, and everywhere he went, they went right there with him. 
Regardless if it cost them their physical body, regardless if it cost them their job, they were making a sacrifice to just be in his presence. And while making a sacrifice in his presence, sometimes you stand in need of something. I wonder, is there anybody who says, Pastor, I stand in need of something. Lord knows I've, I've made a lot of sacrifices and I stand in need of a healing. I stand in need of something. These people were in need of something. The Bible says, of course, they were following Jesus. And it goes on to tell us that in verse 3, And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company. So the Lord goes to prayer. He goes into the hour of prayer with his disciples, and, and he goes to a mountain. And while sitting on the mountain, he and the disciples, and they were just having a, a regular conversation, the Lord looked out and saw the multitude of people that was following him. Now, mind you, in this crowd, nobody raised their hand and said, Lord, I'm hungry. But the Lord knew on the inside they had a need. I believe this is the season that some of you getting ready to get blessings that you didn't even ask for. I, I, I'm, because you've been longing and yearning in your spirit and you don't want to verbalize it because in your mind you feel like it's a sign of weakness. But God says, I heard you groaning. I heard deep down on the inside what you really need. And you've not even asked me. But God says, I heard it, so therefore I'm going to bless you. They didn't raise their hand and say, I'm hungry. The Lord just looked out and had something that we must have, he had compassion for the people. That's a, that's a lost word nowadays in the house of God simply because now many people in the house of God is focused more on themselves and not other people. It's all about me. It's all about me eating my two fish and five loaves of bread. You better get your own. I'm eating mine over here. You better get your own. You know there's some selfish saints of God, some selfish believers. Once again, that's not a characteristic of God. That's not a characteristic of what if Jesus would have said the same thing as he was getting whipped to all of us. But he got whipped, pierced in his side, beaten unrecognizable. In other words, he humbled himself and said that it ain't about me as much as it's about those who are following behind me. So these people were hungry. Not only hungry, but they were thirsty. It was hot, tiresome, and we are not told how long they had been following him. Mind you, it's 10,000 plus people. And listen, they walking by foot. They ain't driving, they walking by foot. So the Lord knew that they were hungry. And so he looks at the church. Mind you, the church is the disciples. The church is the disciples. They, they are Jesus' hand. They are Jesus' feet. They, they are the church. These are the 12 individuals that he chose to help him carry out the ministry. He looks at the church and he asks the church, what do we have? And, and Judas was the treasurer. If you look over there, look at your Bibles. I know some of you probably have already put it away. Look over there. It said, whence shall we buy bread that we may eat? So Jesus had asked the question, uh, 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 how much money do we have? Like, I know all these people are here. What do we have in the treasury? Look at verse 6. And this, and this he said to prove him for himself, knew what he would do. Jesus already knew. Philip answered the question and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient. Translation, they only had $34. They only had $34. Now, mind you, $34 in that day was a lot of money. Not $34 today. $34 don't even get you a biscuit. Seriously. So, translation, they didn't have enough to feed the people. What, does the, what do you do when you feel like you ain't got enough? You see, you got to understand something. To you, it may not be a lot. But God says, all I need is a starting point. God says, all I need is a starting point. You may not think it's enough because it's in your hands. 
But God says, when you put it in my hands, when you put it in my, look at your neighbor and say, put it in his hands. Put it in his hands. Put it in his hands. I don't know what you're putting in his hands, but put it in his hands. Get it out of your hands. And when you put it in God's hands, he can make that thing multiply. He can stretch it out all the way. And where you thought you only had enough for two days, God says, I give you enough that you can last for two years. I got it. I got it. I just got to give it to him. The Bible says this, and this is my text this morning. He asked the church the question, how much money we have? Philip said, we got him at $34. So the church did not have the answer. If the church would have had the answer then when Philip said what he said, they would immediately went out. Mind you, it's 10,000 plus people. And listen now. Jesus, there's a multitude of people everywhere. Imagine this auditorium filled up 10 to 15 times all over. So there's people everywhere. And again, they were following Jesus. The church did not have the answer. I'm not belittling the church by any means, but believe it or not, sometimes church, you know what God will do? God will will always try the church and show the church that they're not all that and a bag of chips like they think they are. God says, I'll prove to you, you ain't all that. Because if you was all that, you would have what people need. And the Bible says, in the midst of 10,000 plus people, here is a lad. Y'all missed that. A lad is a young boy. A youthful young boy. A young person having the answer to the church. Don't you underestimate what God is doing through our young men and young women while in Kingdom Life Fellowship. You need to be open in your spirit, open in your mind. God used this little girl to preach to me. God used this young man to sing to my soul. Because God, I look for the answers over here. I look for the answer over here. I call pastor. I call the prayer team. I call this person. And I don't have an answer. And God says, I'm going to use the praise team, the youthful praise team, to answer your prayer. They're going to answer your prayer through a song. And you're going to get confirmation sitting right there. And you're going to leap and say, my God, my God, that's you, Lord, speaking right there. The young man had the answer right there in his hand. We're not told how he got this fish, these two fish and five loaves of bread. Where he picked them up from, we are not told. Maybe he was in the marketplace. Maybe he stole two fish when, when the fish man was up there and he nobody was looking. I, I know y'all saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. Y'all ain't never stole nothing. Oh, y'all ain't never stole nothing. Maybe, maybe the fish man wasn't paying attention and he grabbed. He grabbed him two fish and said, I got these two fish. And if I can keep these two fish right here, somebody will buy these two fish. He had his little pouch and nobody saw him. And, and then he slid over here. Well, if I got two fish, I know I've got to get me some bread. I got to get me some bread. Y'all notice what my bread is, right? My bread is the word. I wonder if you got any bread in you. I wonder if you got any bread in you. So I got my two fish. I got my five loaves of bread. And don't nobody see me. And the young lad had it in his pouch. And we're not told how long. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is this. Matthew ain't got it in his gospel. Mark doesn't have it in his gospel. Luke ain't got it in his gospel. John put it in his gospel. Maybe John was sitting back over there watching this great miracle that was getting ready to take place. Maybe John was sitting over there saying, my God, where are we going to get? And all of a sudden, in the midst of John's conversation, John realizes, wait a minute, there's a, there's a lad as a young lad and the Lord is going to use what this lad has he's going to use what this young man what this young man has in his hands my God my God I've got to write about this and and if anything I could give it a title he got it he got it he got it in other words he has the answer he has the conduit he has the very thing that the church needs the young man 
just got two fish and five loaves of bread. Not knowing what he has is getting ready to be used and be multiplied in a way that would astound men today. This is why I want to help all of us and mainly our young people that sometimes you, you second guess yourself. Sometimes you underestimate yourself. Sometimes you walk in around, you're kind of insecure. I've come this morning to tell you that you got it. And let me tell you, if you got Jesus, then you got it. Oh, y'all missed that. Some folks think they got it because they got church in them. No, 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 no. If you got Jesus in you, then you got it. If you got church in you, you ain't got it. Because church can't save you. Church can't heal you. Church can't deliver you. Church sometimes may not have the answer. But how many of you know this morning that Jesus can heal? Jesus can deliver. Jesus can answer your prayer. If I got Jesus in my heart, I got it. I got it. They looked at the young man and maybe they were puzzled because they were expecting it to come from somewhere else. And this is why we've got to be careful in this season that we adults can't get too lazy if it were. Because God says, I raise up a young man, I raise up a young woman, I raise up a young person in this ministry, and they are going to leap you, and they're going to do things that will blow your mind. Because sometimes we just sit back on the pew of do nothing. When God says, okay, I've given you a season, I've given you a moment, they're like a knot on the log, you don't want to obey my word, you don't want to move, let me go over here and grab this young man right here. And God says, when I put my hands on him I'm going to anoint him and he's going to be able to stand before Goliath and he's going to be able to slay giants yes it's going to blow your mind yes it's going to confuse you because he just came to the church on one Sunday then he comes back on the next Sunday and the Holy Ghost has gotten a hold of him and God has renewed reshaped his mind because we adults sometimes sits on the pew of do nothing on the pew of do nothing I got it and I'm not ashamed of it I wonder this morning are you ashamed of what you got the young man wasn't ashamed maybe when they called him out he's probably like oh my god they're calling me out young man maybe he said oh god I got caught I got caught let me hide my fish yes sir what's in your hand What's that in your hand? Sir, I don't, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. Sir, I, I don't have anything, but if you got a little money, I'll show you I got something. And the young man pulls out his two fish and five loaves of bread. And Jesus said, I can work with that. But this is what we've got to do. Jesus says, I need you to sit the people down. You know what that means? I need order in the house. I need order in the house. I I need you to sit them down in ranks of 50. Sit them down. Sometimes you just need to sit down in God because he wants to bring order in your life. Mind you, the reason why he's telling them to sit down, because they were hungry. And you know how it is when you get hungry? You get frustrated. You you ready to you ready to tell somebody off and 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 you hot and fighting bugs and flies and everything like that. So he says, sit them down. But I wonder if some of y'all saw in the text. Remember, they're in a desert place. How can green grass be in a desert place? Did you see that in the text? Did you see how can green grass be in a dry place? Everywhere he's at. Everywhere he's at, there is life. And even though it says it's dry, when he steps on the dirt, everything that was dry now has to bring forth life. God says, I'm not going to let you sit down on the hard dirt. I'm going to let you sit down in comfort. I'm going to let you sit down on the green grass. I want you to rest. I believe this is the season where God says, I want some of you to rest. I want you to rest your soul now. Rest your mind rest your nerves I didn't tell you to stop praying but I just told you to rest I didn't tell you to stop fasting but rest just rest because he says I'm working this out 
He says, I'm working this out. You don't see how I'm going to work it out, but I'm going to work it out. You don't see me making a way, but I'm going to make a way. You don't see me opening up doors, but I'm going to open up a door. You don't see me supplying all of your needs, but God says, I'm going to supply all of your needs in this season. If you believe that right now, give him a praise in the house. I got it. 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 Can you imagine when the young boy released the two fish and maybe when he did it, he stepped back and was like, wow, man, there go my two fish and five loaves of bread. That's my only, man, I thought I was going to make me $20 off of that. Wow. Mind you, he's hungry too. But he can't see that that's going to meet his needs. That's, how, that's why we got to be careful. Because when you come up here by faith and you plant your seed, you may not see what God is going to do through your seed. But he's going to meet your need through your seed. Oh, God says, I'm going to meet your need through your seed. And you may have planted it and walked out of the door and forgotten all about it. But God says, I saw your faith when you reached down in your pocket the box when you placed it in there God says I saw your faith and even though you may not have what others have you got faith and that's all God says I need you to have is to have some faith I got it I might not do it like you but I got it I might not sing like you but I got it I might not preach like you but I got it I might not usher like you but I got it I may not dress like you but I got it I may not sing like you but I got it I may not two-step like you, but I got it. I may not eat what you eat, but I got it. I said, I got it. I'm going to say it till it gets in your spirit, and you and I can touch and agree. I got it. I got it. I got it. That's what the devil is after. What you got. Not your car. Not your house. He's after what's on the inside of you. The Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. To all my children, to all the children, greater is in you. You may not feel great sometimes, but if Jesus lives in you, if he's in your heart, you have him. You have him. In a few minutes, we get ready to dismiss, go eat our candy, go about our way. But even though we may not be in the presence of each other, I still got it. I got it even when I ain't got a suit on. I got it even when I ain't got my skinny jeans on. I got it when there's no microphone. I got it all the time. I got it all the time. And you got it all the time. Stop letting the devil beat you up walking around telling you you ain't got it. If when you, when you doubt yourself... It's a discredit and slap unto God's face to say that Jesus ain't enough. Is he enough? If he's enough, then you square your shoulders back, wipe them tears away, and let the devil know, I got it. I got what it takes for this. Because people will come in your life, and they will whisper to you, and they'll try to have you living like somebody else. They'll try to have you being like somebody else. They want you to be somebody else and not want you to be you. See, that's the enemy. That's the trick of the enemy. That's the trick of Satan. Wanting our young people to be like Michael Jordan and LeBron. Wanting our young girls to be like Beyonce. The devil is a lie. Just be who your mama and daddy called you to be. And if mama and daddy has not called you to be anything, God has called you to be great. I said Jesus has called you to be great. So be who he's called you to be and be the best you. So what you don't do great, the great in, in the school? So what you don't do great with grandma? Brittany's always getting on me about my grandma. Lord knows, and rightfully so, she can only do that. And, and, and I listen to her, believe it or not, and I try. But then as I'm flowing, I'm just like, God, forget it. As long as I got it, that's all that matters. 
Now my wife is going to make sure I got it as well as speaking correctly. I get that part, but as long as I got it, and I got Jesus. So I'm going to ask our young people to come to this stage because I want them to be just like this young man. I want them to know I'm going to ask all youth to come at this time. And while you're sitting there, adults, I want you to be thinking about this. There was a time in your life, and maybe now some of you walk around. Y'all spread out right here. You know how we do it. Y'all just spread out right here. Look at me. Everybody just kind of spread out right here. Face me. There was a time in your life, and even now as adults, that you question, do I have what it takes on the job, sometimes in church, sometimes at family reunions, you go to family reunions and you see your cousin or you see your brother, and all your life you've had to live in his or her shadow, and you've walked around feeling like a second-class person always trying to live up to somebody else's status always trying to get up that ladder to be like them you take two steps forward and it seems like you drop back five more steps questioning yourself doubting yourself believing you don't have it I've come this morning and share that story about that lad. That lad, he was a young boy. I don't know his age. I'm going to just give him, I'm going to give him 12, between 12 and 15. He was a young boy with two fish and five loaves of bread in his basket or in his pouch. And Jesus took that and fed the multitude of people. He didn't know that what he had was enough. And maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you don't know what you have is enough. So my assignment this morning is to tell you it's enough if it's Jesus. Not church. If church was the answer, then John would have never mentioned the lad in the text. But John mentioned this little child because I believe the Holy Ghost wanted us to see the emphasis that God can use you. God can use you. It ain't always got to be Pastor Henry. It ain't always got to be the adults. God can use you. And Jesus wants to use you in your way, your gift. All of you are gifted in your own unique way. Don't be like nobody but who Jesus has asked you to be like. I understand we get role models sometimes. We see them on television and, and we see these people and you see people in school and you see people on, on magazines and you see people on Twitter and Instagram and you think they got it together. But I'm here to tell you, most of the time they ain't got it together. And I'm going to go ahead and be honest. If they ain't got Jesus, I know they ain't got it together. Don't you let them fancy cars and and all the bling bling and all the nice clothes that you see some of your classmates have and, and see other people. Don't you let that stuff fool you. That stuff is material stuff. That's not what life is all about. Working to get a job or get a career so you can get a nice house, a nice car. That's okay, but the first thing you must have is Jesus. The question that I would ask some of them, do you got it? And they may say, got what? And I would say, do you have Jesus? I am, and mom and dad is out there this morning, but I'm spiritually speaking now, spiritually speaking, I am your father. Think about that. Where's Nolan at? Come here, Nolan. Come here, son. Come here. Come here. The reason why I grabbed him is because I want him to feel this anointing that I feel right now. I'm your spiritual father. Now mom and dad, 
are who they are. But I'm the pastor. I'm your pastor. But I'm your spiritual father. And I'm going to treat you like I would treat Nolan and Eliza. To pray over you. To encourage you. To inspire you. To uplift you. To tell you that you have it. If you have Jesus. And that you not walk around insecure, scared, afraid, and timid. Second guessing yourself, believing that you don't have the skills and the ability and the knowledge and wisdom to do the test and to do whatever they ask you to do. So what? You make a mistake. Jesus will forgive you for your mistake. So what? You don't get it right on the test. So what? You don't do it like them. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. As long as Jesus says, I still love you. As long as Jesus says, I still accept you. That's all that matters. Can you imagine that little lad, that little boy, when he saw those two fish multiplied and everybody was filled? Can you imagine as he was eating the fish, he realized, wow, this Jesus is a cool Jesus. Because it started out with two fish and five loaves of bread, and now he's able to feed the multitude of people. That was my fish. That was my bread that I stole. Jesus didn't punish him because he stole it. And I don't know if he stole it. I'll just use that as an example. But let's just hypothetically say he did. Jesus didn't crucify him. He didn't cast him out. He didn't turn his back on him. And he's not going to turn his back on you. He's not going to turn his back on you. I believe Nolan is the youngest here. One. Yeah, Nolan is the youngest here. One. Even Nolan being one years old, Jesus is not going to turn his back on him. He's not going to turn his back on him. So church, I need you praying. I need you standing, first of all. And I need you praying with me. Because they are in a fight. You're fighting for your peace. You're fighting for your joy. They're fighting for just to have a sound mind. They're fighting just to be able to go through the day and overcome temptation. They're fighting. They're fighting. They're fighting. They're fighting. So I'm asking that you pray with them. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We pray right now, God, for all of our young men and young women who are here at this altar. We bind the spirit of fear. We bind the spirit of anxiety. We bind the spirit of pressure, God. We bind those insecure feelings. We bind the spirit of insecurity that would make them sometimes question themselves make them doubt make them feel like they're not worthy but Jesus today we declare that they are worthy worthy they are worthy because you died for them and just like this young lad this young boy who had that gift of two fish and five loaves of bread in his hands he had the answer and I pray God for every youth that is at this altar to let them know that what they have, you can work with. That they have what it takes. That they got it. They got it. They got it, Jesus. They got you in their heart. They got you on their mind. And they love you. And God, they're going to give you praise. They're going to give you glory. They're going to give you honor for everything that you do in their lives. We bind the spirit, oh God, of fear that they would walk in who you've called them to be, not trying to be like anybody else, but who you've called them to be. May you take what they have and multiply it. Take what they have in their heart. Multiply their talents. Multiply their gifts. God, multiply their mind. Multiply it, Lord, to let them know that, Jesus, you're right there with them. You're going to see them through it all. And God, we'll be careful to give, them, give you the praise give you the glory and give you all of the honor we plead the blood over our children this morning we plead the precious blood of the lamb upon them as they enter back into the school system tomorrow as they enter back into daycare God we plead the blood no weapon that's formed against them shall not prosper in the name of Jesus and every tongue that rises up against them God you shall condemn Find that spirit, oh God, of our children not being able to learn. That ADHD, we bind that spirit right now, God. 
We know our children can learn. We know our children can comprehend. We know our children can read. They can add. They can multiply. They can write. The devil is a lie. We bind the spirit of ADHD right now in the name of Jesus. All those labels that comes through school systems, we believe, God, our children will have a sound mind. They will not be on medicine in the name of Jesus. They will be able to function without medicine. The only medicine, God, they will have is the Holy Spirit, God, living on the inside of them. So, Father, we pray today, do it, God. Do it in their lives. Show yourself, Jesus. Show yourself to them, God. Show yourself to the youngest, to the oldest, even those that are sitting in the pews right now, God. Let them know to help them overcome their insecurities. Let them know that, Jesus, if, they, if you live on the inside of them, they got it, God. Not only do they got it, Lord, but they're going to walk in it, talk in it, activate in it, God, and be who you called us to be. We give you glory, give you honor, give you praise for it all this morning. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. One more time, give God a hand, clap of praise in this place for our youth. Amen. And the Lord is in this place. As we're getting ready to close, I'm going to ask, open up the doors of the church. If there be one who says, Pastor, I want to be a member of Kingdom Life Fellowship. I have been coming for quite some time and I'm, I'm ready. Um, the Lord has been pricking my heart, and I want to be a member at this time. Now, mind you, it's God who sets the members. It's not I. It's not anybody in this building that gets you up out of that pew. It's the Holy Spirit that leads you at this time. Would you come? Would you come? We thank God for all of our online listeners this morning. We love you. We praise God for every one of you who tuned in. We pray today that you would dig deep within yourself and you would realize, I got it. That's right, I got it. I got Jesus, I got it. I may not have it like others got, but all I, I got it. And if I got Jesus, I got enough. I got enough. I don't have to add to it by any, I got enough. I got what it takes to overcome. I got what it takes to come through. Would you stand at this time, please? I'm going to ask for some help. We're going to have to break down all this equipment here. Of course, we got our children's stuff going on outside, so I'm going to need some men with some, some muscles real quick. The more men we have, up here on the stage, now mind you, just really need you to kind of move things in some rooms like that. We have to break down every every week for a couple of weeks now, which is okay, no big deal. Um, the more people that be able to um, help Minister Damon and Dre will be able to, to assist everybody as far as the cords and all of those things. So asking for some of our men to kind of help out. Everyone else, we got the candy and everything, I believe. They're out there now prepared and making sure everything is well. Remember, Sunday school sign-up sheet for anybody who wants to be a teacher. Um, I believe it'll be out there as well as D being out there to kind of let everybody know in reference to what kind of hoodies you're going to have. I thank God for all of you. I see some, some familiar faces in the audience this morning, and I'm just grateful that you would come out. You may forget what you had on, may forget the candy that you're going to eat in a few minutes, but don't forget this word. I got it. Somewhere this week you're going to be challenged. Somewhere this week you're going to be challenged. And I pray you remember, wait a minute, wait a minute, the devil is alive. Greater is he that's in me. I got it in me. I've just got to stir it up. I just got to stir it up. And I stir it up through prayer. I stir it up through praise. So I pray once again. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory, praise, and honor for it all. We pray every word, every song that was sung today would bring you glory and honor. We pray, God, today that as we're departing from each other, but never, God, from your presence. Be with us, oh God, on today. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it all. In Jesus' name and all of God's people say amen.